Hello, good evening and welcome to Become a Better Man. My name is Tunde Disu. Thank you for being part of today's program and apologies that we're starting half an hour later than usual. But on today's program, we are going to be talking about conversation. We're going to be conversing about conversation and the role, the impact, the effect of conversation and how it contributes to who we are and what we are talking about conversation builds character conversation builds character i know that sound like what is that all about what has conversation got to do with my character what has my interaction with other people what has it got to do with who I am and who I become or how I behave and all of that? Which is a legitimate question. It's a, it's a good place to start asking those questions. But I am here tonight to help us, maybe for most of us, at least for me, for the first time when I was preparing for this program, I begin to understand the importance of conversation the, the the benefit of being a good conversation conversationalist the the, the development that having co contact and face-to-face -face interaction with other human beings how that adds value to you as a person and how that builds your character and enables you to become the person that you are and the person that people perceive you to be you see, we live in, a, in, in, a, in an environment where the absence of strong personal contact with other people, of having face-to-face -face human relationships with other people, of interacting one with another, has led to many people ending up with in anxiety. It has resulted in depression for some. And some other diseases are on the increase, loneliness and feeling of rejection, feeling you are not belonging, feeling you nobody cares for you. All of that has increased lately because there has been a, a, a measurable, a tangible reduction in the amount of personal contact that we have, in the number of face-to-face -face conversation and interactions that we have with other human beings. Don't get me wrong, I am using a social media platform to talk to you tonight. But the reality is, this, this technology-driven life that we are all living in today, this life where we have become enslaved to, to our tablets and our phones and our laptops and this and that, where technology that is supposed to bring us together has actually put us apart further than we were. Technology has reduced the number of face-to-face -face interaction that we have one with another. And the impact of that on our mental health, on our psychological, uh, on, our, on our psyche and how we see ourselves and how we relate has really affected the way we talk, the way we converse, the way we relate, the way we perceive, the way we, we value one another. If you check on your social media handle, any of them right now, maybe on your Facebook you have 1,015 friends. On your Twitter you have 500,000 followers. On your, on your Instagram there are about 827,000 people following you, which is great, don't get me wrong. But the reality is, irrespective of the number of followers and the likes and the friends and this and that, that you have on all of these social media platform put together, it will still not substitute for what you get, for what you give, for what you become, for how you relate, for how you affect other people when you have a face-to-face -face conversation with them, when you have a direct human contact relationship with them. Even our ability to speak 
proper English, good grammar is affected. Our ability to, to spell, to construct a sentence, to put two, two sentences together, they are all being affected because we have stopped talking. We are all just typing. And while this negative psychological and physiological effect from the loss of face-to-face -face conversation are worthy of being mentioned or being highlighted, I'm sure I'm not the first person to talk about that, why many people are talking about them, and rightly so. The fact is, this same, this same issue has led to even a bigger problems in our lives. The trend of being, being enslaved to, to, to technology has, has led us down the dangerous path which has reduced or has ended up at a destination where our character has diminished. Where your character, my character, has suffered where our ability to uphold ourselves has really taken the backside. You can, you probably have been at the receiving end. You probably have witnessed it. You've read about it. You've, you've, you've seen it on social media where people are being shamed because of the way they look, where people have been, been, been abused and, 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 and just really trolled for, for whatever reason. You see, it is easy for all of us to hide behind a screen and say what we're not supposed to say and pass comments that we know we're not supposed to pass. And because of that, our character, the person who we are, has been, is gradually being eroded because we have lost touch with the importance of having a face-to-face -face human contact conversation. Instead of saying hello to your neighbor, instead of asking your, your friend, in the, your colleague in the office, how are you today? How was your evening? How is the family? All we do now is to send emoji. All we do now is to, to send characters that you're supposed to, to get a degree to be able to understand. We think character is something that is forged in the, in the crisis and in the decisions with clear moral weight. Yet, when you dig down, dig deep down, down, you will find that character is actually developed in more in, 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 in the little, ordinary, mundane, daily activities, but primarily through the interactions that you have with others, through the conversations that you have with others, through the exchange of ideas, of, of views, of, of, of conviction that you have one with another. And as we're going to see tonight, there are so many things that we're, you, you, we're going to uncover tonight that you will be asking yourself, really? You mean all of that were included in the, this simple conversation we, 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 we have? And, and the answer is yes. And so we're going to dig deep and see how the ability to converse, to interact, to exchange ideas and, and views and, and, and argument and, and debate one with another face to face is an avenue to build good character. In fact, given its daily accessibility and repeatability, the practices of interaction, the corrections and the refinement that you make during the course of conversation that you have with other people it 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 trains you it's a it's an avenue to train the human soul to be able to relate to other human beings to be able to interact and fit in into a society but if all we do is to type and not talk we're not just robbing ourselves 
and denying ourselves the opportunity to develop good moral characters, but we're also just eating away the edges of society where the development and the enrichment of the human soul is concerned. So tonight, let us look at some of the things that are involved in conversation, some of the things that we do during conversation, some of the things we're not supposed to do, do when you are conversing, especially face-to-face -face with, some, with, with somebody else. And then you, you begin to see how when you bring all these elements together, when you when when you you sing them together and you you become aware of them you will be amazed how much these issues these high points that we're going to highlight tonight you will be amazed how much they will improve you as a person how much they will improve your relationship with other people and how much they will they will go a long way to boost your your self-confidence in yourself because even you can see that your character has taken a, 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 a leap up. So the first thing that we must understand as far as conversation is concerned that will help to build quality characters in all of us, the first thing that conversation, the first character block, let's call it that, the first character building block that conversation, face-to-face -face interaction with other people will build in you and I is self-control. Self-control. Even the Bible said if a man can control himself, he can take over the whole world. Self-control is the, is the first thing that we're going to look at as a character development trait that you will pick up in the course of having a conversation with somebody else. You see, the behaviors that we must summon to engage in conversation with other people, it happens with so little conscious awareness that in fact, you have to hold yourself. You have to pull yourself together. You have to carry yourself a certain way. You have to present yourself in a certain way. You have to interact in a certain way. But all of that doesn't come just like that. It doesn't just fall on you. You have to consciously or subconsciously develop self-control in order for you to be able to apply this principle, apply this methodology in your day-to-day -day conversation with somebody else. For instance, in every conversation that you have, especially, most importantly, a face-to-face -face conversation with somebody else, you must check your body language and your facial expression. Action, they say, speaks louder than voice. You must check your body language and your facial expression. You must demonstrate that you are interested in, who, on, in what this person is saying, and you must demonstrate friendly, friendliness towards this person that you are conversing with. Now, if you are on the phone, you don't need any of that. If you are, if you are sending a text, you don't need any of that. If you are sending an email, you just need to do your, your spell check and grammar checks, and then you send your. You must avoid rolling your eyes or inappropriate look of shock must not come on you while you are conversing with somebody else. You must avoid disgust or looking bored with why that person is talking to you. You must avoid a posture that says you are closed up or you, you, you are nervous or you are being defensive. All of that are happening when you have a face-to-face -face conversation with somebody else. But you don't need, you won't do any of that. You don't need any of that. None of that will come into play if you're sending a text. If you're writing an email. Even if you're on the phone. You could roll your eyes, they can't see you. You could pull your face, nobody can see you. 
You could do anything because they can't see you. But when you are standing in front of another human being, all these necessary self-control uh, uh, points will have to come into play in order for you to have a, a good conversation with the person. You must watch what you say. You must watch how you say it. You must be careful how you listen. You must abstain from jumping to conclusion in the course of the other person still making a point. You must, you must abstain from excessive negativity and, and complaining. You must not gossip. You must, you must not insult the person. You must not speak negative of the person or somebody that they know. All of that are happening just as you are having a face-to-face -face conversation with somebody else. But you don't do that if you are not standing in front of the person. And because all of these are happening at the same time while you are having this conversation, either while you are talking or while you are listening, it forces you, it, it, it puts the onus on you to be self-conscious, to be self-aware, to have self-control in order for you to have good conversation with somebody. You must keep yourself from saying things that are thoughtless with no meaning, whether it is uh, or something that will, 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 will make the other person uncomfortable. You must listen attentively. And listening is different from hearing. Listening is, is an act. It's a verb. You have to do it. You have to listen and, and, be, and react appropriately to different parts of the conversation that you're having with the person. You must choose your words, like I said, carefully, articulate them very well, and talk either too fast or too slow so that you can hold the, the, the audience of the person you're talking, to, you're talking to. All of this is happening while you're having just one conversation. A good conversation requires a lot of mental discipline. It requires, it demands you to have a high degree of self-control. So if self-control is an issue in your life, I'm not going to charge you, but I have just introduced you to an avenue from where you can learn and develop and cultivate and perfect self-control. Just go and have face-to-face -face conversation with somebody else. But you see, to many of us, including myself, we didn't see it that way. We never thought when you are talking, you have to have self-control. When you are conversing with somebody, that self-control is, is needed. Or that you are even applying self-control while you are talking. The second building block, the second character building block that you will you must have that you will that will help you when you have face-to-face -face conversation with somebody in the process of building your character is that you must be focused you have to have you must be focused because conversation is simply an exercise of being present in the moment it is an exercise of undivided attention to the person that is talking to you or that you are conversing with. And so in order for you to engage fully in a face-to-face -face conversation, you have to be focused. You have to shut down every distraction, every outside world and disentangle yourself from every devices that can ring or shout at you. You must listen again attentively and continually. You have to continually wrestle your mind, bring your mind back to where you are, who you're talking to, because our minds have the tendency of wandering and just traveling and just take a leave 
of absence. It is therefore your responsibility as a as part of developing your, your ability to focus when you're having a, a face to face conversation. It is res, it is your responsibility to arrest your mind and bring it back to say, No, we're here. We're talking here. This is what we're discussing. You have to pay attention here. You have to commit to the idea that there is nowhere else. Give the person you are conversing with, give them the, the understanding, the impression, impress upon them that there is no other person, there is no other place you would rather be than right here, right now with them. If you are able to do that, then you are a good conversationalist. But you see, it requires discipline. And as you focus yourself on that one person, at that one moment, in that one conversation, you are building your character. You are developing yourself. You are improving your self-worth before that person. And even within yourself, there is a sense of, of honor that comes upon you because you are focused in the conversation you have. The third character building block that conversation will teach you, that conversation, a face-to-face -face conversation will enable you to erect and develop is the ability to remain calm, to have a, a composure that is calm. A good conversation requires the mastery of reaction. You must be able to know what, when, how, where to react. It's not that when you're supposed to laugh that you look away, or when you're supposed to show empathy, that you bust out laughing, or when you're supposed to keep quiet, that your mouth is running. There is an, that you must develop the ability to remain calm, to have a composure that says, I am all in this conversation. Because you see, conversation is give and receive. Each partner will offer, will give something, and then will receive a response from the other person. The important thing is that your response, your response to the person talking, whatever you are giving to the person listening, must, must be in line with the conversation, with the topic, with the, the facts being discussed. And in order for you to do that, whether you are talking or you are, you are, you are, the, you are the receiving end, you must listen attentive, attentively. You must listen attentively because if you don't, you won't know when to react or how to react appropriately at different stages during the conversation. And you cannot perform an attentive listening in a state in a state of stress when you are when you are agitated. If you are attending to an emotional maelstrom, or, or your body is shaking and you're feeling this, and that, you can't pay attention, you can't uh, you you will not be calm, you will not be composed to hear what this person is saying. And therefore, you will not be able to respond appropriately. When you are when you are agitated, when you are when there is, a, is a, an air of anxiety around you in the course of conversation, your words that you're saying will be jumpy, will be awkward, will be rushed, or will be mumbled, and they'll be wondering, "Are you okay? Are you all right? What did you say? How did you say?" And that will take away from the element of your conversation. So, as a, to be a good conversationalist, to develop your character in the course of your conversation, you must learn how to hold your nerves, how to quiet your nerves, how to position yourself in a place where you're, you are in, in full control of, your, of, your, of yourself and your faculties and everything around you. It is needed for you to be composed, to be calm, 
even when you are responding so that your response is measured. Especially when the other person starts to say things that sound like they are, they are indirectly insulting you. Or when they say something that, that makes you want to be angry. When they say something that, that it's like they are being jealous of you. Or they simply just taking a mic of you. Or they just, they, they, they talking down at you. Unless you are composed, unless you are together, unless you have your, your members within your grasp, you will lose it. A lot of people end up in a big physical fight in the course of a mere conversation because they have not developed this, this building block of being calm, being composed, being together. The ability for you and I to be able to receive what somebody else is saying, either to us or about us, without getting ruffled and, and becoming so agitated, it starts with you being unafraid to enter into any dialogue because you know you are in control of yourself. You are in full control of your feelings, of how you receive. You have developed a, 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 a Teflon that when water hits it, it just rolls off. Does that mean you are absent-minded? No. It's just that within you. Have you ever been in a conversation that you know from experience? from what you have heard, from what you have seen, from what you have even partake of. Have you been in a conversation with somebody and you know this person is going to talk to you condescendingly, is going to insult you, is going to call you names, is going to ridicule you, is going to let you know that you are not worthy, you are below me and all of that. And yet in the midst of that, you just hold your peace. You just calm. You are composed, you are together, and there is nothing that defeats a bully more than when you let the bully know that I'm not scared of you. And you are not going to tempt me into doing what I should not do. I am a good conversationalist, and therefore I'm going to remain calm. I'm going to compose myself and hold myself and be myself even when you are insulting and being condescending towards me. And that is a character building block. You can't buy it from Sainsbury. The next character building block that you must develop, that you will have, that will become part of you in the course of having a face-to-face -face conversation with another person is humility. Humility. A lot of people who are supposedly, and this is where a lot of people are falling down, that's where, this is where a lot of people are losing, losing, are, are messing up their, their, their character. Because they lack humility, which is required for you to have good conversation. For you to develop, a conversation helps you to develop humility. In the first place, you won't know everything. Not everybody you interact with will know as much as you do. Not everybody you interact with you that you will know more than they are. It's a case of give and take. Give and take. Conversation is one of the best avenue to learn, especially if you're a good listener. Somebody said that's why God gave us two ears and one mouth, so that you use more of your ears than you use your mouth. So in order for you to develop humility, have you ever been in the presence of somebody that you're trying to explain something to and they're just telling you, I'm not interested in all of that, uh, that little talks, just go to the point, just go to the point. There's a place for go to the point. But it's a, there's a place 
for building it up, for starting from, from ground zero and build the case up so that you can have full understanding of the facts of the matter. But people's ego, those who lack humility, will say, I'm not interested, I don't bother myself with small talk. I just want you to give me the, I just, I'm only interested in the, yes, maybe you are only interested in that, but it does not. In fact, it robs you of the, 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 the development of a sense of humility. Somebody said, even a fool can teach you something. If only you will be humble enough to listen. If nothing else, a fool will show you, will demonstrate, and will tell you, this is not how to do it. But if you are too pompous and too beefed up and too, too arrogant to even listen, you end up being like a fool. Because what you're supposed to learn from that fool, your ego has robbed you of that opportunity. But a good conversationalist, they know that the development of any pursuit, it starts from foundation, from the basic facts, from, from pulling it all together in pieces, and they start building it up. In order for you to develop humility in the process of conversation, you must never feel that you are too good or you are too big for chit chat and for little talks and for this. No. Walk through with the person that you are talking to. You will learn more. You will grow quicker. You will be better. They will respect you. They will honor you. You will, you will, be, you will feel better even within yourself than for you to say, oh, no, I'm not interested in that. I don't do small talk. Just, no, please. Even the almighty God that is ruling and managing the whole world, he's still interested in James saying, God, you know, last night I couldn't sleep. You know that thief that they pulled two years ago? Remember that doctor didn't put on aesthetics? You know that? And God is listening. If God can listen to small talk, maybe you need to learn to put yourself down a little bit because it is an opportunity for you to learn how to be humble. Another character building block that face-to-face -face conversation will help you and I to develop is the power of observation. The power of observation. You see, conversation is, is so spread wide that it is very rich. It is diverse. It is, it is every. It has all the juices in it if you will just be observant. There is so much to notice in a conversation because it's like traveling on a journey. It's like traveling on the train and you sit by the window and look at the trees as they fly by. Look at the animals and the houses and the birds and other trains and the track that is broken and this and you are taking in all those information when you pay attention when you are observant when you develop this power of observation in the course of your conversation you'll be able to identify the places the point at which you and the other person, where you connect, where you agree, where you disagree, the topics that this person finds really exciting to talk about, so that tomorrow when you meet the person, that's not the time to start learning what do I say to him now, how do I address this person. No, because you've been observant yesterday, you have learned that they like talking about the weather. You, you have learned that they like talking about fish. You have learned that they like talking about the financial market. Now you have gained that knowledge. Now that knowledge gives you an entrance into this person's life. And everybody 
is always happy when you find somebody who can scratch you where it is itching, who can talk your language, who is, who is traveling with you on the same frequency when you're having conversation with them. When you develop this power of observation, you'll be able to identify the pauses that we all have in our, in our conversation, the hesitation, the shall I or shall I not, the, the moment of indecision in the, in, the, in the course of conversation, the sudden change in the tone and in the body language and the, the things that they emphasize and the thing they try to hide and just drop it down a little bit. Those things they want to say, but they are not sure whether you are the right person to say it, or it's the right time to say it, or it's the right environment to disclose it. You'll be able to pick up all those things. You'll be able to see what they are referencing. And you can use that to come back to them in your own response. But if you are not observant, you will lose all of that. How many times? Even today, this very Thursday, during the day, have you tried to talk to somebody, somewhere, anywhere, and you just know that this person is not here. This person is not here. They are not observant. They don't even know what I said last. They cannot remember the last question I asked because they are not observant. A good conversationalist must be a good detective. Not that you go looking what is under the hood, no. But a good conversationalist is a good detective because they can turn a conversation into a curious investigation. Really? Is that what you mean? Did you really say that? How do you think that went? What did you feel when he said that? What was the reaction when you heard that? Who was dead? What was the environment? And you use that to build a picture that is clearer, that is brighter, that is well understood compared to you, know, you, you just like when you finish, let me know. When you are observant, you listen in the spaces between the notes. You pick up clues that others will just miss and not see. One of the differences between a good policeman and, a, and, a, and another policeman when it comes to interrogation is this power of, of observation. They can hear what you are not saying. They can see what is not obvious. They can pick up what is not real. They can, they can travel with you where you don't even want to go. And then they drop the question. So, you said this, this, and that, and how about this? And then the truth comes out. Because they were observant. They were able to pick up those little, little uh, uh, crumbs of facts that were left on the table, seemingly not part of the conversation, but all along they were. Another character building block that face-to-face -face conversation will help you and I to develop is the ability to decrease your self-absorption. When you, when, have you, We've all been there, we've all seen it, we've all even in, to some degree practiced it and, and just hate some people about it. When you talk to some people, or when people talk to you, do you only talk about yourself, me, myself, and I? Is that all they hear? Every conversation will suddenly find its way back to you. Every conversation will travel and then it will come back to your bus stop. Do you only talk about yourself and fail to ask the other person anything about themselves? Are you one of those people that you are talk somebody is talking to you? And before they say two words, you, you, you interrupt 
Before they say three things, you are interrupting them. Before, and they can't even get a word in edgewise. And at the same time, you are not even listening to them. It's all about you. When your conversation is all about you, you have just built another platform of expressing the ugly side of you. But when conversation is done properly, when face-to-face -face conversation is handled properly, is, is managed as a, a true medium of exchange, where you give and I take, where I give and you take, few things, few things about me will come into my conversation with you. Few things about you will come into my your conversation with me because in a good conversation environment, you are looking for the best of me. You are trying to give me the advantage. You are trying to make me feel better. And I'm doing the same thing. So if in order for me to make you feel better, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about you. It is not what you say to people that matters. I need you to hear this. It is not the volume, not even the quality of what you say to people that matters. It's how you make them feel about themselves after the conversation that matters. That is what they will remember longer than the facts of the conversation. But if all you do is to absorb yourself and it's all about you, me, myself, and I, you have not had a conversation. So in order for you and I to build this aspect of our character, of giving the advantage to the other person, we must engage more in face-to-face -face conversation. Because a good conversation, it transcends, it goes far beyond your ego so that people can notice you so that you can you can get one point over the other person a good conversation is always free from feeling that if i'm not in the center of this conversation then something is wrong if it's not if they if we're not talking about me then then it is not happening if it's not about, if they don't recognize me or appreciate me or this and that, put yourself, just relax. There is more to this world than your beautiful face. Thank God for your beautiful nails and your new wig. But right now we're trying to have a conversation. Learn to compliment the other person. Learn to, to make the other person feel good and feel great about themselves. They will pay it back to you without you demanding it. Oh boy. At the beginning I said, some of the things we are going to unwrap today, many of us, including myself, we didn't think about it. We have not thought about it as far as con having a conversation is concerned. Because, number one, we all have less face-to-face -face conversations, these conversations these days. We just talk on the phone or send a text or send an email, send a WhatsApp, send a, an Instagram and, and a Twitter and this and that. Or we post everything on Facebook and ask people if you're interested, go and read it there. But there is nothing that can take the place of sitting across the table from your spouse, from your children, from your friends, from your colleagues, from your boss, from your subordinate, from anybody, and just have a good chin wag, as they say in Yorkshire, where you just talk and laugh and, and spit at each other if you have to. A good conversationalist will cherish above all that two minutes that they spend with you compared to 10 pages of the documents that they have to read. So the next character building block that a good conversation will help us develop is creativity. 
creativity. You know, having a conversation, in fact, conversation is an art. It's a skill that you have to develop. It, it's an arena for proficiency and strategy. It, it involves you being creative, thinking on your feet. Conversation is like a is is like a dance, where the two partners must flow together. They must hit the right note. They must move together. They must agree to to swing together. They must there must be a, a, a sense of harmony between them and their body movement and their thinking and and then you see a beautiful picture being painted. A good conversation is like a, 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 a being a member of an orchestra. The violinist is playing. The guy on bass is basing. Those people on drums are going. The trumpet is going. The keyboard, the conductor, the dancer, everyone is doing their own beat. But together, they are producing something Je ne sais quoi. Something so amazing, something so beautiful. But ask that violinist to do that all by himself or herself, and it's a different ballgame. So, part of what you will learn in the course of conversation, of having a face to face conversation with others, is to, to be creative. Is to be creative is to be able to think on your feet is to be able to, be able to flow with the, the the line of conversation is able to interact you know when you meet people when you interact with people when you converse with people you are only able to 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 know what they are saying you don't know what they are going to say until they open their mouth and say something, you don't know what is going on in their mind. But creativity gives you the ability to immediately create a wavelength that flows with their line of thought and their line of, of speech and what they are, the, the point they are trying to make so that when it comes to your turn, you are ready to take on the baton and continue the tango dance. But if all you do is send text and WhatsApp and what's this and what's that and all of that, you are limiting yourself. You are robbing yourself. That spontaneity of being a creative person, of being able to be there right there and there at the moment and be fully there to be part of it and be fully engaged in what is going on. It is not coincidence that most original thinking and philosophies of the 18th century, they came out of places like where the Greeks hung out, like the salon and the coffee houses all over Europe. It's not because somebody sat in one dark room and they were thinking and thinking. Yes, that's part of that. But most of them came out of people being creative in the course of conversation, in the course of talking. They started, their, 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 their creativity juice started to flow. And then wisdom is going. Philosophies, ideas are popping out. If you want to grow intellectually, Get out of your room and go and converse with somebody. Talk to somebody. Have a proper conversation with somebody. Another character building block that face-to-face -face conversation will help you to develop is courage. Is courage. Somebody said courage is the is the father of all virtues because upon it hangs all the other virtues in life because every step into a conversation is a step into the unknown you don't know what the person is going to say 
You don't know how they're going to say it. You don't know when they're going to say it. You don't know where they're going to say it. You don't even know what mood they will be, what mood they will be when they're saying it. So every conversation demands courage. Courage that you need to step out of your comfort zone into an avenue, into an area where you don't know what is coming. You don't know how it will go. You don't know whether it will result in a connection or it will result in a fight, breakout. You don't know whether it will result in an intimacy or an embarrassment or hostility or this or that. You don't know. But yet, you have to step to the line. You have to bring yourself to the point of having this conversation. And it is this reason, it is by this reason of the unpredictability of conversation that all of us approach the threshold that we approach that table, that we approach that venue, that we approach that person, even though we, there's, uh, we, we can't predict what they're going to say, how they're going to say, how they will react, how we will respond. We don't know, but yet, courage tells us, go ahead, you can do it. Because stepping out to the unknown Crossing that threshold where you don't know where it's going to lead takes courage. And you can only develop that when you put yourself in a position to develop and to demonstrate courage in a face-to-face -face conversation. You don't need courage to pick up the phone and curse somebody out. You don't need courage to pick up your text and text something ugly about somebody. You don't need courage to post anything on Twitter. You don't need courage to pass an ugly comment or say something that is not true about somebody on Facebook. But when it comes to face to face, you need courage. The next character building block that conversation, face-to-face -face conversation will help you and I to develop is curiosity and openness. I need you to listen to this. Every person, every human being is like a tiny sovereign country, a microculture, a world unto themselves, and the passport, the visa to visit that territory is conversation. What you need to be able to interact, to go across your own threshold, your own sovereign land into the other person's land, the, uh, the visa, the vehicle to go there is conversation. Have you lived in an, in, on a street, in a neighborhood, in a community where everybody is just keeping to themselves? I remember my family and I, we lived in a, in a village some years ago in Harpenden, in, in Hertfordshire. And to get to that neighborhood, you have to go through some really posh area. You drive through the golf course and all of that. And when we moved into that neighborhood, we were the only black people there. But more than that, most of the people there were retired this and retired that and retired this. And so they were just, and there we were with our three little children and ourselves, my wife and I. And you can see people not knowing what to do with us. They don't know how to now to cross the, the threshold of their own sovereign community into ours. And so we took it upon ourselves to visit them in their own community through conversation. Hello, sir. How are you? Good afternoon. Ah, have a great day. 
Oh, how is Janet? When you start to know their names and the names of their children and the names of their pets, now you are beginning to travel from your own country, from your own sovereign land into theirs via conversation. And by the time we left that community, we had friends everywhere. The whole community opened up to us because we opened up to them via conversation. Every person has something to teach you. If you approach them with an open mind and a sense of curiosity. You know why? Because every person has different experiences in life. They have been through different things. They have different views. They have different ideas. They have different mindset. And everything about them is filtered through those experiences and those exposures and those connections and those backgrounds. So if you are open and curious, if you would develop this building block in the course of your conversation, you will, you will discover that each person can, can give you a different angle of life. Maybe they can, they can educate you on facts and some profound insights that you don't even know before. They can, they can, they can help you to change your mindset by opening up an avenue that you have never seen before that will shape you for the rest of your life. Some struggles that you're going through, when you converse with somebody else, they will tell you, my brother, this temptation is not just your issue. It happens to all of us. It helps you to understand why people think the way they think. Why somebody who doesn't know you, I've never seen you before, don't know your name, they just hate you. Why? But in the course of living life, you establish, you approach them with an open mind and you show that you are curious, you want to know them for who they are. And suddenly, that sense of hatred and disdain just disappears. One of my very, 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 very best friends today, when we first met in 2004, never met them before, don't know them prior, just never. And within the first few weeks that they saw me, they just hated me. They just can't stand me. They just think, what is wrong with you? This guy is just everywhere. What's the matter with him? That is it. That is it. But as we interact, as we socialize, as we converse today, I can't count three, four, five friends before I mention their names. Because I was open and they were open. And we were able to find out what is it about you exactly. Oh, my goodness. Let's conclude. For today, because this series, will, I believe, will continue next week. The next building block, the next character building block, that conversation will help you to develop and help you to have, is generosity. Is generosity. Because Engaging somebody else in a conversation is a gift. It is a gift. The life that we live now, the society that we exist in, the world that we don't, that we occupy right now, if there is anything that it is deficiency of, is attention. Nobody cares about nobody. Nobody cares about how you're feeling. Nobody can be bothered or pay you attention. Nobody is interested in your story. Everybody is busy, busy, busy doing nothing. Everybody is in a rush, going nowhere. 
But when you take your time to engage somebody in a conversation, what you are giving to that person is the precious gift of attention. When you listen, when you interest somebody, when you, when you give somebody your audience, you are encouraging them. You give, you, you, you're transferring a, a, a feeling of warmth and compassion towards them. You are giving them your most precious asset, your time and your energy and your resources and your audience, your presence, your body, your mind, your soul, your everything. Engaging in conversation is an act of hospitality. Because no matter the location of your circumstances, no matter the location or your or your whatever your circumstances is in life, every time you engage in a conversation with somebody, you are actually assuming you're taking on the role of the host. And what does a host or a hostess, what do they do? They ensure that the person that they are hosting, the people they are hosting, they make sure they, are, they feel welcome. They feel at ease. They help them to, to feel at home, to find themselves, to become at ease with themselves, not with the host. The host makes sure, will make sure that their visitor is at peace in their house, in their presence, with them around them so every time you engage in a conversation with somebody is an act of generosity you are you are being you giving a gift to that person and that gift is a gift of attention of your life of your person of your ears of your of your bandwidth of your body of your soul of your energy of your time because let's face it we live in a crowd but most of us are lonely there's nobody to talk to nowhere to turn and so when they find one person that will just listen it's heavenly it is heavenly In conclusion, having said all of this, conversation is an avenue, it's an opportunity, it is a platform where you and I can cultivate inner decorum, inner peace that leads to an outward peace and decorum. It's an opportunity for us to develop generosity of the spirit, which leads to generosity of, of what we say or how we say. All conversation, for you to have a good conversation, you must apply the, the qualities of patience, of courage, of generosity, of openness, of humility, of influence, and all of these, all of these put together are helping you to build a character, to put you in a place where you become the sought after, where you become the, 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 the go-to person, because people know that when they converse with you, they always feel better about themselves. They always feel encouraged. They feel energized. They feel uplifted. They feel there is, there is hope for them in life. The health, the sanity of a person, of a family, of a town, of a village, of a community, of a country, of the whole world will emerge 
if you and I would develop the skill, the art, if we will grow the power of exchanging one on one conversation with another human being. My charge to you and I tonight is this. Make it a point of duty. Between now and the rest of this week, make it a point of duty instead of sending that text, talk to the person. Instead of using emoji, talk to the person. Help yourself to develop all these character building blocks that we've covered tonight. And then tell me next week if you're not better, if you don't feel better even about yourself. Because I know as we all engage in this giving and taking call conversation, we'll all be better for it. And the world will be a better place because we make an effort. Thank you so much for listening, for being part of tonight's program. Like I said, we haven't finished. There are still other breaks, other character building breaks that we'll be looking at again next week. But this is what I want you to do for me. Don't just sit on this. Talk to somebody. Send it to somebody and say, we need to talk about this. Make it, a, make, make, use, this as, use this as a tool to open the door of conversation with somebody. You will thank them and they will thank you for it. Share this program with somebody tonight. And let's make this world a talking, conversing, better place for all. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great evening.